everybody. Um, so, I just thought I'd say hi. I'm about to go for a run. I wanted to start my video before I went on my run, though, because I got my hair cut today. And I don't know if you can tell, but it looks all spiftastic, and it feels awesome. I wish I could let you feel it, because she put this crazy stuff in it right before she blow dried it, and it was all, like, oily and smelly. But now it's fantastic. But anyway, I'm just taking a minute here before I go for my run because my grandma is begging me to email this friend of hers but my computer's being all wonky so I figured I'd at least start the video while I still could before I got all sweaty and gross looking and uh, I guess I'll finish it when I come back so uh, see you when I'm all sweaty and gross looking <laughs> bye hello people of earth and welcome to five billion and one time I, welcome to the five billion and first time I have attempted to make this video. Um, so I'm back from my run, and I'm all gross and sweaty, just like I promised you earlier. And, uh, I, if, if you've been outside lately, you've probably noticed the zillions of alien creatures on every single outdoor surface, like trees and grass and cars and signs and trees. Did I mention the trees? Because they're in the trees. I'm talking about cicadas. They're actually a type of locust, and I think we're suffering a biblical plague. Actually, <laughs> cicadas only come out, or locusts or whatever, only come out a certain number of years, and I think this is one of those years where like two of the different kinds like overlapped. So, you know, like the five year and the seven year, or whatever they are, like overlapped on this year. At least that's what somebody told me. I'm not a bug expert or anything. But if you get up close and personal with a cicada, as I have many times, um, mostly because they like to dive bomb my head. Um, anyway, you get up, up close and personal with a cicada, you'll notice they like, that they look kind of like aliens. I'm pretty sure they are aliens. And they want to eat my face. That's why they dive bomb my head so often. Like, seriously, I'll just be walking or running or whatever, and then all of a sudden, there's one like right behind my ear, and it's so gross. They're really, really, really gross. I don't like cicadas at all, and I think they're trying to take us over. Or this is a biblical plague. I mean, it's adding up people. We had a tsunami, we had an earthquake, we have tornadoes all over the place, and now locusts. Plague of locusts. But did you know you could actually eat cicadas? There's recipes online. You can go online and find recipes for cicadas, which is <laughs> so gross. But, I mean, it was good enough for John the Baptist. He ate locusts and honey in the desert. Yeah. Anyway. So I was running today. You know what I hate about running? I love running. But you know what I hate? Well, that's usually true. What I really hate about running is those people that come right up behind you and then they make some kind of noise. Either they like rev their engine or they yell at you or something or make rude comments. Um, but it scares the poop out of me every single time. Or they honk or whatever. That one always gets me. And <laughs> and so I'll just be running and I'll be so in the zone and I won't even be noticing it then. And all of a sudden, Burr! and I'm like, Burr! kind of like I am when a cicada hits me. <laughs> I'm working on that though. Because my, my goal is to not be, not freak out about cicadas ever again. Or at, by the end of this summer. Even if one surprises me and comes out of nowhere. Like, if I see a cicada and it's in front of me, I'm like, oh yeah, there it goes, it's chill. I'm not like, eh, there it goes, oh, it's a cicada. But then if one is like, if, if, if it just, like, scares me, like, all of a sudden it's, like, right up by my ear or on my shoulder or something, and they make those horrible, horrible noises, like, rah, rah, rah. Oh, meh. so gross. Did I mention that they're aliens? Because they are. Hmm. I bet they came here thousands of years ago, and they're coming out of- that's why they come out of the ground. Because they came here before the Ice Age. They had to hide in the ground while the Earth was all cold. Anyway. I also wanted to talk to you about getting haircuts. As I mentioned earlier, I got my hair cut today. You probably can't tell now because it's all sweaty and gross looking. But I did get my hair cut today. And I don't get my hair cut often. That was kind of a big thing for me. Last time I got it cut, it was down to here, and I got it cut up to here. So it was kind of a big deal. I donated like 14 inches or something like that. And, uh, but anyway, getting your hair cut. It's such a strange experience. Now, guys, I have no idea what getting a haircut is like for you. It's probably very different. So, uh, 
you might not be able to relate to this next part, but ladies, I know there's more of you than boys watching this right now, because I have more friends that are girls than I do that are guys, and even fewer of my guy friends would actually watch this video. So, um, when you're, first of all, you go in, and whether your hair is dirty or not, which mine was very clean this morning, because I washed it just last night before I went to bed, um, they want, they always want you to get shampooed, and I guess you have to pay extra to get shampooed, but my mom always, pay, she pays for my haircuts, and she says, oh yes, shampoo her hair, which is the most awkward experience ever, because you're sitting on this, uh, this, like, weird sink with, like, a U-shape in it for your head, and your head sits like that for way too long, and it just, it digs in there, while this lady, who's, I'm, I mean, they're all very nice ladies, I've never, only, well, okay, one time I met a very mean hairstylist, but other than that one time, I have never met a bad hairstylist, but it's just the most awkward experience ever, because you're laying there, and first of all, you don't know what expression to use, because you're sitting up like that, and you're looking up at the ceiling, and you know, and your face is being smushed back, because that's how gravity works, and so you know if your face is just relaxed, you're gonna look like an idiot, like, but then, oh, what, are you supposed to smile the whole time? Because then you really look like an idiot. <laughs> and then where are you supposed to look? Anyway, you're just staring up at the ceiling and sometimes staring into her armpit when she reaches over you to get the other side of your head. Like, if she's standing on this side and she reaches over this side, her armpit is in your face. In your face. That's gross. I mean, normally they smell very nice. I'm not saying that hairstylists are stinky. Not at all. Just... It's weird to have someone's armpit in your face. So anyway, and then, then, so after you've spent that entire time trying to decide what facial expression to use and where to look when you've got an armpit in your face, then you have to get up. Getting up is awkward because they're, they're all like with the towel on your head trying to make sure you don't drip water all over yourself because they think you're going to get mad and really I could care less if I was getting all wet because of my hair or whatever. I know my hair is unruly and likes to cause me trouble, and I understand that, but, I mean, from their perspective, I can understand why they would want to keep your clothes from getting wet. So they're trying to keep your clothes from getting wet, and they've got this towel on your head, and so they're awkwardly, like, trying to guide your head up, but then you've been sitting there with this, like, thing on your neck for so long, your head feels like it weighs, like, 6,000 pounds, and so you're getting up, and you're like, Ugh. and then your head feels all weird, and then you have to hold a towel on your head, it's just so strange. And then you're sitting there in the chair and again comes the... Well, you, you get down over to the chair and you walk across the room and your head is all wet and it's curled up awkwardly in a towel. And they usually make you hold the towel because if they hold the towel, it's even weirder. So you're holding this towel with all your hair in it and you're walking across the room with a wet head and a wet towel holding your wet hair. And it's very strange. And then they set you down in the chair and you've probably already got that stupid collar thing on that has like the big like umbrella curtain type thing that protects your clothes from getting all hairy, which would be gross. And then then you just sit there for forever watching this lady take like little sections of your hair and go like snip 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 and then like another little section snip snippity snip. And what are you supposed to watch? Are you supposed to like scrutinize her through the mirror the whole time? Like I am watching you the entire time cut my hair. <laughs> Because that's creepy, and I feel like I, I feel like that would make her uncomfortable. She's, I mean, they're probably used to it by now, but still. And then, but then what are you supposed to look at if you don't look at that? Are you, like, examining all their personal items, all their little pictures and stuff they've got lined up? Because that's kind of creepy, too. And there's just no good place to look, especially when they're leaning right over you, and it's like, whoa, your neck is in my face. <laughs> Because they always lean real close to me when they do the front to make sure that, like, this and this matches. Oh, look, it does. <laughs> and so they're, like, right up in your face, and you're like, ah, ah, ah. But they're looking at your hair and not your eyes, but where are you supposed to look? I don't know. <clears throat> so, the whole haircutting experience was very awkward and strange, at least for me. It's probably totally fun and awesome for everyone else, but... I'm that one weird person. That always happens to me. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> well, I gotta go, because I've got a ton of 
posts to write for my website because my friends are those type of people who have gotten to the point where they're like, post or we kill you. And, and I'm like, okay guys, I love you too, but seriously, I need to post or they're going to kill me. I should probably post this too. <laughs> well, i got some work to do, so bye bye